Welcome. It's Wednesday evening once again, and time for these moments we spend together in prayer and reflection. I'm thankful that each week you manage to clear out some space and time in your busy life for us to reflect and to meditate and to pray in the very presence of God himself, drawing ourselves away from all the distractions so that we may focus on one thing just for a little while. Tonight I've chosen a passage of scripture from Paul's letter to the church at Rome to usher us through this time of prayer. That passage now appears on your screen from Romans 8. It reads, The whole creation is on tiptoe to see the wonderful sight of sons and daughters of God coming into their own. For that verse tonight, I chose the translation from the Phillips translation of the New Testament. I chose it because I'm taken with that imagery of creation on tiptoe. It conjures up images of anticipation and expectation kind of like what I see in the eyes and faces of children at a Christmas parade. Perhaps you have been there. Small children trying to see each float coming down the street. They peer around the legs of adults. They look through the legs of adults. They stand on tiptoe to stretch up as high as they can to see everything. For everything is wonderful and marvelous and breathtaking. And they become particularly excited when they spy that red nose of Rudolph. Because they know Rudolph is pulling that sleigh in which Santa is sitting. And when Santa appears, they stand even taller on their tiptoes. Their eyes are glazed and a smile is on their face that describes joy far beyond any words we could ever find. Paul's words inspire me to believe that someday we will spark such excitement, anticipation, and expectations when we finally arrive as followers of Jesus, expressing his love and compassion, his mercy and kindness, and our world in ways that no one has ever experienced before. We have some work to do. We're not quite there yet. In fact, it seems some days we're still struggling to trust that there is power in mercy, in compassion, in kindness, and love. And yet Jesus says these powers can transform not only individuals like you and me, but our whole world, if only we will find both the faith and the courage to live by them. Sometimes I think we try too hard. We try too hard to be what we think God wants us to be. When perhaps we just should just simply simplify our lives, take things a little more slowly, and listen and respond with kindness, compassion, mercy, and love. I think St. Francis would be a good guide for us along this way. And so tonight I've chosen his prayer to guide our time of prayer together. So as we read these lines, may we find ourselves living into this new way so that we will not disappoint all of creation standing on tiptoe waiting to see us. Let us pray. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is injury, let me so pardon.
Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is doubt, let me sow faith. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is despair, let me sow hope. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is darkness, let me sow light. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is sadness, let me sow joy. Now let us join our voices in prayer in the final words of this prayer. O Divine Master, grant that we may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive. It is in forgiving that we are forgiven. It is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. As we move on through the days of our lives, let us give thanks for each new day. Let us rejoice in the goodness of life. Let us serve others. Let us share generously whatever we have. Let us love our neighbors in the very same way Jesus loves us. And let us, at every opportunity, choose peace. Good night.